This is the Glass Cannon Network. change. But one thing that remains a constant for the Glass Cannon Network is that the best fans in the nation are in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> it's a fact. It is a fact. <laughs> and although the entire city of Seattle has the charm of a truck stop bathroom, <laughs> that you folks took a night off from being a barista or a long moor fisherman, whatever the fuck you do out there, <laughs> to show up for us. I mean that. Sure, walking around your filthy metropolis feels like you're constantly strolling down a haunted alleyway, but with all sincerity, I want to thank you on behalf of the team from the bottom of my heart for dodging meth heads like an NFL running back to get here tonight. 
We appreciate that. That is hard work. <laughs> I really, honestly, no joke, looked down an alley today and didn't walk down it because I was afraid. <laughs> like I saw like two people near a dumpster just kind of like doing something and I was like, I'll take the next street. You only lived in New York at one we point. We are from New like, York. You are embarrassing us. It is what are different. you talking about? Here it's like a constant Oklahoma drill. Uh, <laughs> Google that if you don't know what that means. It's very funny. Um, no, but listen, I, I've got, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm looking on the bright side, and so I'm looking on the bright side tonight. At least we're not in Portland. Am I right? <laughs> that place is terrible. <laughs> hey, who is from Portland that's here and drove up? Yes! Thank you for hey. making the drive. Wow. They, they cheered the loudest hating Portland. They know. I know. They know. Good for you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> we are We're so glad you escaped your city. <laughs> You're safe now. Yeah. <laughs> now he took a safe. raft for a long time. <laughs> no, um, we are uh, we are once again sold out tonight. Two years in a row, sold out. Thank you, Seattle. Thank you. Thank you, Seattle. Thank you, Triple Door. And we are, of course. Once again, graced by the presence of our good friend, a man who loves Seattle so much he can't wait to get the fuck out. <laughs> Give it up for Paizo's own Eric Moda! Oh, oh. Yeah, buddy. The moon, as his friends call him, right at the office. That's the not moon. what my friends no. <laughs> no. Black Snake Moan is what they call it. Uh, <laughs> probably is now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That should stick. Uh, Eric, how the hell are you, buddy? You're packing, you're leaving. I'm doing great, yeah, I'm leaving. Sorry, I'm leaving Seattle. I know, sorry. I want a fucking house and you can't buy one here, so. Yeah. Bye! Uh, but it's been a good 24 years and it's, I'm here another couple months, but this is a nice entry to the end game here. Yeah, yeah. This is great, and where are yeah. you moving again? Minneapolis, Minneapolis. Where, I, where I came from originally all those long years ago. So what I'm hearing is if we do another show in Minneapolis, party at Mona's house yeah. and you're all in. He already house. said he was going to do it. There's so a phrase no over. one could ever say until now. I have a fucking house, so yeah. come over. Yeah. <laughs> we can hang out in his basement. He's going to have a basement. <laughs> well, and a, and a second. You're going to have three living rooms? I do. Well, I don't mean to brag, but... <laughs> Uh, Joe and, and Sydney and Kate and I got in yesterday and uh, like the losers that we are, we went straight to a gaming cafe and played board games for about six hours. It was awesome. Just crushing rain years, what the hell are they called? Rain ears? No. Rain, oh, the beers? Yeah. Yeah, rain ears, they're awesome. Yeah. Drank about a hundred of those. That was a good time. In fact, if the audience is cool with it, I would just like to play Wingspan this evening instead of Pathfinder. <laughs> we played a Wingspan. thrilling game of Wingspan. I think we can audience. role play Wingspan <laughs> for two and a half hours. Get that nut hat away from me. <laughs> Let's get to the band. This is a this is a good band topic. I think I have tonight. Oh, here we go. They've been hot. All year, but this is a real good one. This one's gonna make you think, Kate. I don't have thoughts. Well, <laughs> once that fizzy drink gets Dear to your head, you will. All right. Let's say you had a time machine, and you could only use it twice. Once to go somewhere, and once to come back. Would you go to the past, or would you go to the future? I'll be waiting upstairs for your answer. <laughs> Playing wingspan. Uh, Skid, I feel like you've thought about this, considered it. Hell, maybe even used a time machine. <laughs> where, where would you go? Past, future, and where? I feel like I've talked about this, but I would take all of my synthetic rubies. Right. Uh, and, uh, there you go. And a bunch of, like, Butterfinger BBs and uh, cookies and cream ice cream and a cooler and go back to Rome circa about like 65 AD and uh, just have a good time. Just blow their minds. <laughs> <laughs> to buy a villa you know, with the rubies and uh, just didn't really enjoy my, my time. What about you, Sydney? <laughs> and what candies would you bring with you? Uh, I'm pegging you for a future. 
you know, speaking of candy, though, it makes me think of like traveling back in time and giving a pilgrim like a sour patch kid. <laughs> That's what I, I'm saying. I think about that life. all the time. Oh my! You think about that all the time. Their yeah. heads would explode. You think like, what? I, I'm, I seriously think about this like three or four times a week. <laughs> like it's just like, oh man, like someone in the classical world like could taste this. Fucking what you call it? They would go. They would lose their fucking yeah. minds. But my fear. Here's my fear. Because of that, I have the same thought too. If I go back in time, I'm gonna be a witch. If I go into the future, probably gonna be a witch somehow. Like yeah. something's gonna get. So I don't think it's appealing to me for like me for my life. But I think I would love to just go really far into the future just to see. Like, I don't know if I would do anything. I don't want to have, like, a weird butterfly effect thing happen to me and uh -huh. ruin my life. I know it's the past, but uh, I think I would just well, like go to... like, Jack Vance far, or, like... I don't... See, I think I would, like, scrape the keyboard and hit enter and just oh, see what happens. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to approach it. And then I'd come back. <laughs> yeah, if you only got one shot, why not close your eyes and see yeah. it? <laughs> just, like, randomly... Yeah. And then I'd come back, I'd be like, you guys wouldn't believe what I saw! And then they'd be like, you're a witch. What year were you in? That's, I don't know, I don't yeah, know. I don't know, I don't know where I was or they when I was. They don't have years anymore. They don't have years anymore where they're from. Yeah, I don't know, I think I'd go in the future. Uh, Eric, what about you? I think I'm gonna pick the past because I know that it exists. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, that'd be a tough comeback from like the void. That's you know? true. And Imagine. so uh, I'm going to go with the past. I think because I collect books, I'd go to the bookstore, the magazine rack. I'd be like, I'll have the lot, put it in a bag. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just come right back home and read pulps for the next, until I get another time machine. And then I'll go to the next month to get the second part of all the stories. Yeah. That's deep, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kate, where are you going? Uh, time is a flat circle. Here we go. Someone, <laughs> someone always tries to break the question. <laughs> what, will hap what happened before will happen again. Who gives a shit? Uh, who wants my time machine ticket? I'm going to stay here and not give a shit. Uh, all right, <laughs> I'll take so it for the second month of those stories. Yeah, I'm going to give it to him so we can get his subscription. <laughs> give it to Eric. Yeah. All right, one pass. Pass. And you, Joe? Uh, I think I think similarly to to Mona uh, or Moan. That's like uh, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, do you like the band White Snake? Because White Snake Moan is like a cool. Snake. Does, yeah, he does like White Snake yeah. a lot. I'm gonna get you a T-shirt that says White Snake Moan. <laughs> I like it. He's got the long hair. I What's, just uh, I, I think you could be a obviously very surprised by the past, mm -hmm. but that it is. Some to some degree unknown quantity, like you, you know. Whereas the future, I mean, you could be, you could never come back very easily. So yeah, he said we I, could come back. Well, well yeah, but you're coming back. But you don't know what the physical the heavy rules of physics may have changed. Yeah. that's what you never know. I mean, unless you go like a year and a half in the future. I don't know why you do that. But a year and a half <laughs> in the future. <laughs> what a dumb idea. That's what I'm could you imagine being in like That's twenty? You used it for? Being in like twenty nineteen and going like a year and a half into the future? Oh God! <laughs> oh man! So again, time is a flat oh, circle. Man. Don't do it. <laughs> the correct answer was go into the far future until you could get multiple time machines and travel. You. So sorry, zero points to both teams, and that's our show this evening. You know, I actually thought about that, and then I thought, that's dumb, so I'm not going to say yeah. it. <laughs> because it is very stupid. It's you like know? asking a genie for multiple, multiple. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's also like, how do you know when there's more time machines? You only get to pick one time, you don't Just know. Just go really far. Yeah, but... Yeah. Ask the Morlocks. Just go really far and ask the Morlocks. <laughs> That Have you guys scary. invented genies yet? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a bunch of genies, please? I think we've learned a lot about each other this evening. And uh, now we're going to play some Pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did everybody listen to the L.A. show from two nights ago? Thank you. God, this will make this easier. This is the only show that requires homework. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other show, live show, that needs people to do that. Um, significant others, hang on, because this is a doozy. Uh, Joe, 
Give me some dulcet recap music tones. Dulcet recap tones. Maybe a little dark. This is a big, big app, and I'd be lying if I didn't say one of the reasons that we stopped doing Twitch every week about a month ago is I wanted to time everything up perfectly with tonight's show in Seattle in front of this crowd. So, so just like I say to them backstage, don't disappoint me! Can I hear that music? We're bringing in the dark stuff. There it is. Ready? Close your eyes and see what happens. Touch the person next to you in a sensual way. Really get into it. I do. I do have some new drops, by the way. I know you've been annoyed with the old ones, no. but I do have some new ones, so. I love the old ones. Either way. Just over one year ago, right here, at the Triple Door in Seattle, we began book three of the strange Aeon's Adventure Path. We also began the conversion from Pathfinder 1st Edition to Pathfinder 2nd Edition, a decision that, to this day, has been universally loved by the fans. <laughs> Personally. It's the best part. Loved and lauded. We began book three right here, and book three has been about two things, essentially. There's a lot else going on, but there's two main things. One, finding out what Count Hazerton Lyles the Fourth is up to. And finding out why he entered the dimension of dreams and spoke to the enigmatic Dreamlands figure known as as the mad poet. I'm very proud of you for not whispering to Sydney. <laughs> Three sentences in. If you're just joining us for the first time tonight, or if you're not caught up, Skid's character, Aldo, Joe's character, Atticus, and Eric Mona's character, Furble Hoss, AKA Tiny Murder Clown. <laughs> used to work for the Count. They were his thugs, his henchmen, but they have no memory of this. Something happened to their memories, and they were left by the Count to rot in an insane asylum. Well, they're out of the asylum, and they've been hot on the trail of the Count, who is traveling far away to the south in search of dangerous eldritch knowledge. You've discovered that this search brought the Count into the dreamlands where he traveled all over gathering gifts that he could present to someone known as the Mad Poet. I will kill you. <laughs> Is he serious right Does now? Does he right, have to be? I'm taking the chair. Kate, come sit by me. Come sit by me. Sit over there. This is great. This is, off, this is off to a great start already. Poor... Cheers. Poor wow, drink all, all over his buttons. keyboard. <laughs> a lot of buttons over here. <laughs> <laughs> he does this on purpose. Uh, all right, so the Count went into the Dreamlands, found all these gifts to give to the Mad Poet. The meeting between... <laughs> sit together. Great. Teacher's mad. Hey, Kate, what are you doing behind me? <laughs> you drew attention to my exit in the stage. <laughs> you thought you wouldn't no, have known. You thought no one was going to notice. I just had to get a cup and no one cares about the recap, so I thought that was the best time <laughs> to go do it. Um, he spent so much time writing them. It's Mr. DM, hilarious. Mr. DM. I'm so sorry for the interruption. Please continue about Hazard and Lowes. <laughs> First of all, it's a GM, not a DM. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. Fuck. Which you don't if you ever open the Pathfinder Core rulebook. <laughs> Busted. Busted. Touche. I mean, I can get you one. <laughs> For it. Hey, Eric, <laughs> I've been asking for a pocket edition. I would love pocket edition. I will we'll talk after the show. Thank I you, Eric. One, yeah. Thanks, Eric. So, the Count found all these gifts, 
so that it could meet the Yellow King. Well, you did the same thing. You traveled the Dreamlands, you found these gifts, hoping that you could meet the Yellow King. Uh, excuse me, the uh, Mad Poet. You got me all fucked up now! Oh, fuck. <laughs> What I forgot to say was that when Lyles met the Mad Poet, the meeting was so powerful, the Mad Poet shared with him such crazy knowledge, a piece of Lyles' mind broke off and stayed on in the dreamlands. And that piece refers to himself as the Yellow King. You met the Yellow King. He tells you, go get these gifts, I'll take you to the Mad Poet. So, you got the gifts, you come back, and he says, come with me! Let's go meet the Mad Poet. So you travel for hours across the sands of the Dreamlands Desert until you come to a large dune that obscures the view from beyond. Matt, the uh, Yellow King says, I can travel with you no further, but beyond that dune lies the Mad Poet's oasis. So you crest the dune and couched between a valley of similar dunes is a small glistening pool, a large tree, and a small wooden hut. As you come into the valley, your eyes are drawn towards the large lumpy fruits that hang from the tree, but as you get closer, you realize those aren't fruits, they're heads. Not only heads, but the heads of every single one of your traveling companions since this adventure began. The tree comes to life and attacks you, stupefying some of you with its aromatic smells and blasting others of you with the knowledge this tree has gathered throughout its lifetime, bombarding you with mental damage. Even as you defeat the tree, it lets out a psychic blast of mental energy that leaves almost all of you on the brink of death. Ethel Merman, played by Matthew Capitacasa, who poorly planned a vacation. <laughs> That technically he didn't need to fly out to until at least tomorrow. <laughs> he fell, went straight to dying too, while the rest of you, except for Suki, were all knocked prone with a handful of hit points left. But then two things happen. One, Ethel's body begins to convulse like being shaken by invisible hands until it phases right out of existence and a second body takes its place. A body that is apparently doing the shaking. This is, of course, Tiny Murder Clown. <laughs> the second thing that happens is that the door to the small wooden hut opens and a man steps out carrying a large tome under one arm. And that's where we begin tonight's show. See how it sets the tone, the recap? See how they're listening to everything you say? You could set a tone in about 60 seconds. You'll need nine minutes. To I have to tell it to you guys because you don't think about this show between sessions. <laughs> I don't remember what happened in L.A. You think this is all some big game? Yes. It's a game. It's a it's game. It's a game. It's, a it's literally game. a game. You think this is all some fantasy game? Yes. <laughs> For a moment, let me take you back to the material plane. Back to the Selen River and back to the Selen Starling, the boat that all of you are traveling on and the boat where all of your bodies still lay in an unconscious state while your minds are projected into the dreamlands. You've always assumed that from your research, when you die in the deep dreamlands, you don't really die. You wake up back in the real world, touched by a madness. However, you've learned as of late that there are those whose powers defy the rules and natural ways of the dreamlands, those like the mad poet, and that should you die at his hands or at the hands of creatures as powerful as he, it could very well be final. There is no waking up. Well, see, we imagine the boat sails into view. We haven't seen this boat in a while. We've been on the moon. <laughs> we see the captain, little halfling by the name of Skywind Freeling, come up on deck, smell the river air. And she walks over to the side of the boat and looks down at the calm river. Maybe the old couple, Revan and Gossa, who double teamed Sir Julie. <laughs> right before her untimely death. Approach the Were the incidents related? We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Threw her off her game. <laughs> she was mocked. Uh, 
they come up to the captain and they're like, oh, pardon me, captain, do you know uh, how, how long it will be until we reach Casimir? I recognize the, 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 the edge of the Verduran forest here and I feel as if we are, are close, yes? And Skywin says, I say we're maybe about a week out, maybe less. We've been making good time as of late, thanks to clear skies like today. As long as nothing slows us down, our journey should be over soon. All of you are, of course, traveling to Casimir as well. But as she says that, a couple of the crew are like struggling with a fishing net, trying to pull it up, and another crew member comes over, maybe Spitty Pow, grabs it, and just pulling, trying to get this thing up. Finally, they get it up and nestle between a mound of beluga and sturgeon. <laughs> There's a small gnome dressed in a multicolored ghillie suit. <laughs> he says. Now, when last we saw a tiny murder clown, he, he jumped off the boat uh, at a dock and, and, and ran into a town he recognized. I believe it was Zur, the yes. Razmiran city of Zur. He was like, I recognize something here. He, and he ran off. But somehow here he is caught conveniently <laughs> in the fishing net of the cell in Sterling. <laughs> the captain comes over as they're dislodging you from the net. What the fuck are you doing here, you tiny weirdo? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> it's me again! So good to see you! for quite some time, but they don't appreciate quality humor. So they rather impolitely asked me to leave. So I thought, where am I welcome? Why, it's with my old friends above the, the, the selling starling. <laughs> so I traveled to the river and I went down river where I thought you would be. And I waited, and I counted ships. One, two, three. There were like 500 ships. <laughs> and then finally, I, I saw upon the ship the well-known silhouettes of your crew. I saw Figures O'Toole. <laughs> I saw Fanny Kreminger. <laughs> I saw Dinky Fustable. <laughs> bunch of other people and I said there's my friends so I jumped in the water and I swam but the boat goes a lot faster than I can swim so I've been swimming for two days but I'm here and I didn't drown and I hope my friends are still aboard are they here you remember my friends like Sir Julie is Sir Julie here oh uh, sadly, no, sir. <laughs> sir Julie has fallen. Sir Julie fell off the boat? Did you, did you scoop no, her back up? No, no, she, she died fighting a dragon, fighting to save the lives of your other friends. Oh, no, that's terrible. Yes. I wish I could have been there. Yes, perhaps. She had the most delicious-looking soul, and I wanted to consume it. <laughs> That's a very, very uncomfortable thing to say. Yes. That's what they told me in Zur. <laughs> well, for some reason, the gods have seen it fit to save you, and um, the rest of your friends, along with some uh, new traveling companions, I don't believe you met. They're, they're downstairs doing their creepy dream did, stuff. Did you say new people? Yes, they are traveling with, I'm trying to think, since Zur, they've taken on three <gasps> new members. Meeting new people is what I do sixth best. <laughs> well, they're in their trance-like state downstairs. You can go check and see if they're done, and then just stay down there, maybe. If I <laughs> remember correctly, and I think I do, you make everyone uncomfortable. Right down there is where you need to go. Right down there? Yes. Okay. I'm going now. See ya. You sure you don't want to see a trick? That guy's weird. <laughs> okay, fine, bye. bye. I go downstairs. Tiny Murder Clown, you head downstairs. Clump, 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 clump. 
and lying on the floor of the cabin are your old friends Aldo and Atticus and three people you don't recognize. There's a man and two women. One of the women is an elf, the other has an open mouth on her neck to snore it. I just want it to be, not be canon that the neck mouth snores. And it has bad breath at night. <laughs> it's a night guard that it wears. <laughs> it's like a retainer. <laughs> um, that's canon. You go into the room and you, your eyes are drawn to the man that you don't recognize. And when you see this uh, hunk of beef sitting on the floor, there's this moment where your old habits and desires kick in because you have this ability to, to see through this man's body straight to his soul, a soul that's full of sadness and, and hate and lust, all the things you love. <laughs> and all you want to do is reach into his chest and steal his tortured soul. So you do. You grab him and start shaking his body with your rapid, like, flurry of blows, just punching him, trying to reach through his uh, chest cavity to tug as it is soul. And then when you do, suddenly your hands start to go through him and then start to go through the floor as well. Oh, no. And then it goes all the way until you start feeling something hot in your hands and you lift your hands up and just see sand falling through your fingertips. What the hell hot is this? Hot sand. Your hands start burning up. Your body starts burning no. up. And as you pull both hands out, sand falls down you look up and you realize you are no longer on that boat pummeling a stranger <laughs> you are in a desert oasis surrounded by all of the people you saw sleeping except for that man whose soul you tried to steal I what? hate the dreamlands <laughs> Uh, so all my old friends, well, two of my old friends are there, and then two strangers. Mm-hmm. I see. Just, and my character looks like a giant fire woman right now, just so you know. That's what does right. that mean? Is a giant fire elemental. Fire elemental. Holy shit. And we saw Ethel like just disappear, and this murder clown just show up. Like that's what we see. Yeah, it looked like a puppet was like you know, pulling his body. With my like ribbon clad yellow, orange, and red uniform, I look like a fire elemental too. <laughs> What the hell is that? Where did Ethel go? <laughs> Who are you? Where did Ethel go? Are you guys awake? Go home! Hi! I'm, I'm your old friend, uh, Tiny Murder. Well, you call me Tiny Murder Clown. My name is Verbal Huss, but I kind of prefer Tiny Murder Clown. Hi, I'm Tiny Murder Clown. And uh, Al goes, oh no. I'm my old friend, Ethel. No. I miss you most of all. No. Wait, you know this? No, yes, I do. And I would rather face a forest full of those fucking trees than this one fucking clown. Well, no one right was. now. Why would we fight? We're best friends. I, I am a... Well, yes, I'm a huge friend. Wait, I Thank thought your you. best friend was it's dead. It's so good to see you. What? I thought his best friend was dead. Well, he must have thought I was dead because I went to Zer. You're the best friend. I hope so. Oh, so see, I didn't kill your best friend. Yeah. He's oh, right I'm here. So I'm the issue and stop talking to him you'll regret it in the future what <laughs> i'm tiny murder clown hey Hi. and i reach out my chicken hand and you don't flinch no it's cool you have a chicken hand yeah wow yeah i also and, and a mouth in your neck i also have um and she pulls out egg i have a puppet <gasps> <laughs> you can probably tell it has a soul in it oh. that i put i put in it because the witch Baba Yaga thing. What? What, you like my doll? I, I my doll. love your doll. But yeah. A lot of people don't appreciate a good puppet. I know. You know who appreciates it least of all? The people of Zer. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I've never been there. What's your name again? Eris. Eris. I'm, my name's Furble Haas. Hi, Furble. Hi. Atticus, as you watch this menagerie of fools, uh... <laughs> Introduce each other. Well, I mean, not only has his brain just been shredded to pieces by this tree to the point where he is at four hit points. 
Oh. Yeah. Mm, tasty. As much as you can be near near death. And there's just blood seeping from his ears. <laughs> yeah. And, <he's, laughs> and like, he blinks and he sees tiny murder clown. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and like, he's just like chatting with Eris like they're on a first date. Yeah. And the most scariest, the most terrifying entity known in our existence is like strolling toward him. Yeah. Slowly in the background. And he's like, oh, this is happening. So yeah, he's freaking out. I yeah. guess Suki comes out of elemental form, uh, spirals down, lands, and she's like, okay, okay, who's, who's hurt? Atticus, come here. Aldo, come here. Eris, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you need a friend. Come over here, come over here. Come, come, oh, come, come with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a friend. Come, 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 come. How, how did you get here? Oh, I was on the Are ship. you with him? And he's pointing at this man that's like walking slowly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this guy. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> As you all stand there, chatting, <laughs> this man opens the door, comes out. He has a thick toe under one arm. As I said, he has dark skin. He's wearing robes befitting someone who would live this far out in the desert. His shoes curl up into points. He has a huge red sash around his waist held together by a giant brooch. And he has a turban on his head. Let's go to the map and check this dude out. Oh boy. Oh, I have been looking for this. Oh my God. Oh my God. He looks kind of dead. <laughs> oh, he looks nice. Yeah. <sighs> he comes out holding that book. And you have every reason to believe that this is the mad poet. You learned not long ago when you were coming back on a flying dinosaur from the moon. <laughs> you had a long time to talk and you, you learned from the Yellow King that the mad poet was originally a human man named Abdul Alhaz Red, who, not unlike Laos, went searching for dark truths, dark truths which he eventually found and was driven insane. He then penned a book called the Kitab al-Azif, later renamed the Necronomicon. But as Abdul's insanity grew, so did his power, and his powers allowed him to travel far beyond his home planet of Earth. What a big Earth fan. This is why we don't choose to go to the future. Maybe we'll meet this guy. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> travel beyond Earth and into the Dreamlands. While in the Dreamlands, he met Nearlathotep, who revealed to him Azathoth, the Outer God, and the power of those two encounters created a being who would live on in the Dreamlands, reincarnated throughout time as a powerful reflection of Alhaz Red, known as the Mad Poet. He comes out holding his book, and he doesn't acknowledge you. Even at first, he's just maybe walking over to a small potted plant beside his door and begins tending to it. You are, as you mentioned, on the brink of death. It seems like you have a second to yourselves. What, if anything, do you do? Uh, well, Suki is calling everybody over. Um... She realizes Ethel isn't there and is a little confused about that, but she is also not doing great on hit points, um, and she's going to have everybody huddle up and hold hands. Everyone hold hands. Oh, he, Eldo here. I don't want to hold his hands. I'll hold your hands. We have to. It's been in river water. They're no longer coated in blood. This is the fucking thing. It's like <laughs> you've had the worst day of your life, and you're about to die, and then out of the distance, Charles Manson shows up. Eldo. <laughs> That's what this is like. Be cool. Don't be uncool. All right. Be cool, Eldo. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to channel 
and we can all heal at least a little. I'm at full health. We did eat. <laughs> Why is he even in a circle? He doesn't need any healing. This is. <laughs> all right. And we'll hold hands too, Aldo. It, uh, it's the only way for the spell to work. Oh. Here we go. And I'm just gonna heal fifth level, but I'm making everyone hold hands because there's a lot of tension. <laughs> Full team building exercise. Like a kindergarten teacher, making everyone be friends. Uh, so that's gonna be 5d8, and that is 29 hit points that everybody gets back. Ooh, okay. Nice. Who, well, you're still very low. Down a lot. Um, well, that's all I got. Are you with him? Me? No, I'm with you, Atticus. Don't you remember? I was there from almost the start. Oh. Well, I was there actually kind of around the same time you joined up. How did you, how did you find him? <laughs> Thirty minutes after you appeared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, am I the only original cast? Yes. yes. By the way, Eric, the head of the Green Loser is on the tree. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Let's check out this tree. Angeline, uh, as usual, knocked it out of the park. Oh, so, good. <laughs> so cool. Of course, now the tree is dead. It can only be a T-shirt. <laughs> It shall live on eternally as merch. <laughs> as merch. Um, you all healed up and feeling good and feeling strong? No. I have, I have Wait, others. he's not coming toward us right now. He's just like maybe talking to a little plant next to his door. Like he, ex he, he should know we're here, but he doesn't like that kind of a thing? You would assume he's pretty well aware, but he doesn't uh, seem to be He just doesn't give a hell. Uh, <laughs> <He doesn't. laughs> okay. um, I have other heal spells, but I would like to hold on to them. I do, I have my- You would like to hold on I, to them? <laughs> I, after seeing this dude, we are going to need to heal more, I'm sure. <laughs> Those are her rainy day spells. Yeah, yeah. it's her rainy day fun. I wanted to see if we run into some of my actual friends who need them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, truth be told, I could use a little healing. No, you don't. Uh, do, uh, do I, I do. I do have several uh, elixirs of moderate uh, life, which I can share with the party. Oh, okay. I have eight. Eight. So. I'll take two. Thank you. Two for me as well, please. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, no. Uh, may May I have two? Yes. Four. Right. How many Someone uh, just points dropped is an moderate again? Someone dropped an elixir of life. Oh, oh, that was only seven. seven. There were only eight. Oh, no. We're down to seven elixirs. <laughs> I needed that. You know what? I won't take one. Now we only have seven. Suki doesn't need one. That was serious. Uh, I don't need one. They are 5d6 plus 12? Yeah, correct. These will last a while, right? Uh, I'll just hang on to mine. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Chewy, so that's for how much? Who, who, who is this guy? These are moderate, so 5d6 plus 12. Uh, oh, Harris is going to take two. Atticus will take two. Uh, Alda, you're still down, right? Yeah, I am. I take two myself, so okay. that will bring me up to two. full. Okay. Two. Uh, two. Uh, one, if I can get two, two, if Furble doesn't take mine, okay, that'll give I'm me up. Okay, I'm taking Furble's. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, fine. We can... All right, who, who, you hold them. You hold them, If Aldo. you're good, you can have one. Oh, I'm very good. I'm no, great. No, not good at killing, like genuinely well, I'm good. also good at dancing. Oh. <laughs> Japery. All right, he has, Japery. he has one too. Thank you. I just don't want to argue anymore. <laughs> Something about these elixirs of life. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. Now there's two of them. <laughs> Something about these elixirs of life has calmed the tearing and shredding within Atticus's mind. And he's focusing in and sees this tiny clerner, tiny murder clown here and Ethel missing. Some sort of dreamlands plane shifting. And is seeing the way he's acting right now, and he does not understand the weight of the situation. Yeah. So suddenly as he begins to think clearly, he's like, <laughs> Yeah, verbal Haas. Just don't speak. <laughs> that man over there. 
Uh, the gardener? <laughs> yes. Yes. And he's like, it's interesting. It's interesting he said that. The gardener. He has the power to destroy your mind with a word. Tread lightly. It is best if you all remain if you remain unseen, dear. He is how do I put this? He does not wish. He must be treated as a king. All respect the gardener. All honor. Yes, the gardener king. The gardener. Think of him like that. We must bow before him. Do you understand? Uh -huh. If we do not, he will kill us. Okay. <laughs> what makes me happy is that I know he will do as exactly as I have said. <laughs> You can rest easy now that you've explained the situation to Tiny Murder Club. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say, Atticus. Don't worry, I'll help. My you. second oldest friend. Yes, it is. It is good to have you back. Oh, thank you. There is. You brighten a room, unlike Ethel. Thank you. It really tends to darken every experience. Yeah. He was You've never been divorced, have you, Tiny Murder Clown? Never. I've never hardly even been on a date. Same. A lot of people don't like me for some reason. Same. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. It is hard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Paris is so scary. stood by you. I can have friends. Yes, <laughs> I. I don't see no ring on this finger. By the way, check out the uh, Tiny Murder Cloud Pawn. Uh, this will be... Oh, 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 I wow. love it! Cool. Yes! This is uh, the first peek at a Series 2 pin of Tiny Murder Cloud. Oh, it's so good. Available uh, at Gen Con. Oh, uh, my God. Suki also says... My name is Suki Oriana Sode. This is Pepsi, my snake. Oh, hi. And she shows you Pepsi, who's a giant boa constrictor. Oh. She, not giant, giant. It's a snake. It's yeah, it's a big snake. Yeah. at me. <laughs> it's a snake of an indeterminate size. Well, hi, Suki. <laughs> I'm Verbal Haas. It's nice to meet you. Pleasure. Oh, a pleasure. <laughs> I just say that. Oh. <laughs> People are mean to me sometimes. Same. Yeah. You know, it sucks. Well, now yeah. I feel bad. You know who was nice to me? No. Ethel. Really? Yeah. I don't. I don't know Ethel. Huh. I knew Sir Gerald, Sir Julie. He was standing in this very spot and before I knew you Mrs. Old Lady before that. I don't know who that is. That's some old broad. Huh. <laughs> the funny thing is, when I knew her, she didn't know who she was either, so who cares? Really? Yeah. She was old, and thus her soul was not that She sounds enticing. boring. Yeah, she was boring. Hey, but she's Ad dead Ad now, apparently, so who Ad cares? Atticus. What? Should we <coughs> approach? Yes. All right, take the lead. And he looks around like for to be like Ethel. Ethel. And he's like, oh no. <laughs> oh, this is awful. This is terrible. But this man holds the secrets to everything. He will begin to walk across the sand. You take about the King. five, six feet uh, of a step towards him. I do a perception check on the square in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks and he says so Aldo Casamir Atticus Grimm and Verbal Horse you have returned to my oasis but yet now you come with new traveling companions. How did you two get tied up in their journey? He looks at Sugi and Eris. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Sam. <laughs> Your Mr. Sir. <laughs> 
Mr. Sir. Mr. Sir. Is that like a burger chain out here in the Pacific Northwest? <laughs> Your Highness, <clears throat> I was captive um, by a terrible man, Nairo twice born, and these these people saved me, and I owe them a debt. Hey, sir. <laughs> um, hello, sir. Um, I was stuck in the dreamlands, and these people got me out. Turns out all you had to do was die. He thinks about that for a moment. And then he peers back at Aldo and Atticus and Furble. And as he looks at you, you can feel his gaze almost has like pressure on your chest. And then it seems like he realizes something. And he says, Ah, you do not remember your previous experience here. You three accompanied Count Hazerton Lowell's a few years ago, along with others, an old woman named Cartha Malisort and an orc named Borel. I believe he was a half orc. No, he wasn't. If my memory serves he wasn't. me, correctly. more like a quarter orc. If you four, yes. it would be foolish to correct me. It was a joke, sir. I'm sorry, I'm Mr. So sir. Sorry. So sorry, jokes. Sorry, Mr. Sir. Sorry, Mr. Sir. Medium rare, please. Sorry, Mr. Sir. You came with Count Lowell's when he presented me with the same gifts that you bring with you now. Please, place your gifts on the bench beside my door. So, at this invitation, Aldo steps up shaking with fear in this person's presence, and he does an elaborate bow, and he says in perfect syntax, but horrific accent, Asalamu alaikum. <laughs> and he greets him in Arabic. <laughs> and, he, and he turns, and, and he says in Arabic, and he says, uh, uh, it is good to see you again. Here are the gifts that you required. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, he's good. Yeah. Damn, he's good. He regards you wide-eyed, but you can see, perhaps just for a fleeting moment, a little respect. He gestures towards the bench and starts to walk away from the hut toward the pool of water. Do you step forward and place the gifts on the bench? Yes. Am I, supposed to, am I supposed to give a gift too? No, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> what, Your what, silence what do you is gift enough. We have five out of six, right? So like maybe you no. Know. Six, six out, out of seven. seven. Okay. Well, like maybe one, we can each have one to put down at least. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. <laughs> do you think this is a baby shower? This is life and death. Like, oh, I got that too. I, I, this is uh, awesome. Can I put my name on that card? This, can I, can I write my name on the card? <laughs> it's from all of us. It's from all of us. Uh, can we all walk up together with one hand? But like in that ge gesture where it's kind of like we all contributed. Totally. Yeah. Right. 
You want to take credit for the gifts. So yeah, who gets Actually, what? Who wants the best gift? I paid for the tricorn hat, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I want the, the red webbed feet. Those are gross. Are you place all the gifts? I like this idea of all of you walking towards the hut. Maybe one of you deigns to dare even look inside the hut, and you just, like, your eyes won't even let you look in there. He looks over at the gifts. Is he counting them? (laughs) Can he count? (laughs) He takes his tome, his ominous leather-covered book, and regards it for a moment. And then he walks right up to the five of you. And one at a time, he offers the book for you to hold. First, starting with Atticus. Do you take it? You offer it to me freely. (laughs) (laughs) You stole that from Skid. (laughs) <laughs> he, he was going to say that. <laughs> Your greatness, I heartily apologize for not remembering our first encounter. Something has clouded my mind, and I... I apologize. I don't know that I am worthy of holding the book, but it is, if it is your wish, truly... That I take it. I will. I am your servant. And he bows his head. And he offers it. <laughs> and he takes it. You take the book, you hold it in your hand, and you look up at him, and he's still holding a copy as well. Oh, he's got chills. <laughs> <laughs> he then walks over to Aldo and presents the book to you. And Aldo reaches out and takes it and he says, uh, I thank you for this gift to honored friend in Arabic. Again, and he takes it. I'll give you another bottle. Too. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that was good. Right. Same thing. You go and take it, and then you look it up. Look up at him, and he's still holding his copy. Then he walks over to Verbal Hoss and offers the book. Um, Mister Sir. <laughs> Atticus in his head. Is I'm going. not what you'd call a big reader. Uh, <laughs> are there pictures in this book? He just looks at you. Okay, here you go. I'll Squits. take it. I'll take the book. <laughs> take the book. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> then he goes over to Eris and offers the book. I feel like it looks like a creepy looking book. Maybe. <laughs> it's big and creepy. Oh, yeah. So she's wide eyed and holds out her chicken hand feet. Feet hand. Yes. <laughs> These creepy little claws grab the book. Just waiting and ready. And then finally to Suki. <laughs> she takes it. Does <clears throat> Mr. Sir Does <laughs> Does Pepsi need one as well? I also have a friend. And Pepsi looks up. Puppy eyes. Oh, well, no, if Pepsi gets one, Word a Hedgehog gets one as well. <laughs> he can read. I always forget we all have so many companions. I know. I had a hamster, but it died. <laughs> you know what, Mr. Sir? Never mind. It seems unimportant yeah. now. <laughs> Thank you for the book. He lets, he lets you guys <laughs> lets you guys work that out for yourselves as he glares at you. I show Pepsi the book. And he steps back and speaking to you now as a group, he says, What do you rely on most 
in your life. Your health, your might, clear thought, influence, understanding, or quickness. What was the second one? <laughs> might. What? Might. 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 Sorry. Might. Oh, what you mean that again? Your health. Health. Your might, clear thought, influence, understanding, or quickness. Okay. We have one chance at this. We have, do we have an answer? Can, yeah, if we think of Jagger Hoover, Jagger Hoover will appear and destroy us. <laughs> Let's get the right answer. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's natural for each of our characters to rely on different one is, ones of these. I do too. Yeah, yeah he yes, wants yes, you to, give, to reach good Like, sense. a bunch of them are total bullshit. Like, Wait, understanding? Yeah. He's not going to be here next time, so don't worry about him. He doesn't get a vote. <laughs> the rest of us, so we need to think about what they see here. Look, I think understanding. Before, if we don't have understanding, we can't act intelligently on any of these threats that we come across. Mr. Sir, do we all need to answer the same? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I stand corrected. Yes, you do. I mean, I'm ready. I have my answer. I have my answer. Wait, wait. Oh, see. Can we lie? <laughs> you could <can> try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a no. <laughs> uh, okay. Eris, what have you chosen? Influence. Next, clear oh. thought, clear thought. Quickness as to me, quickness, quickness. quickness. No quickness. I, I pick quickness. <laughs> oh, sorry, Atticus. <laughs> I gotta be quick. <laughs> clear thought. <laughs> Which is made much more challenging with Tiny Murder Clown around. <laughs> uh, Suki says, understanding. And then he looks at Aldo Casimir. And again, in a horrific accent, <laughs> he says, Fahum, understanding. In Arabic. For what it's worth, I think our missing friend would have said might. It is worth nothing. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. He <laughs> he was clearly only meant to get us this far. <laughs> His part in this tale is over. <laughs> He's dying too on a boat. <laughs> is that the guy I was punching? Yes. Baby you dying what? Three. Baby, Baby dying, dying three. three. Uh, uh, <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he motions. He looked good. To each of you. <laughs> to open the book. And as you open the book, and as you answer, clear thought, understanding, quickness, influence, you begin to flip through the pages of the tome in your hands. The symbols and letters just dance across the page. It looks like everything is moving and nothing makes sense. But not unlike the feeling you got when this tree blasted you with knowledge, you feel this like overwhelming sense that some sort of knowledge is seeping its way into your very soul. Based on your answers, you each have permanent plus two bonuses to certain ability scores. Oh. Oh. Eris, you chose influence. You get a plus two to charisma. Okay. Oh, Eris. <laughs> Tiny murder clown. <laughs> Tiny murder clown, you chose quickness. Yeah. You get a plus two to dexterity. Ooh. Oh, my. Ooh. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Suki and Aldo, you chose understanding. You get a plus two to wisdom. Oh. And I am shocked that Joe didn't fuck this up. <laughs> I know a mini game when I see one! Shocked! I 
I've said he is going to be so angry when he chooses wisdom. Clear thought is intelligence. Yeah! Oh, he needs it. He needs it. Shit. He. Damn it. This information bombards you and you, you feel like you're hyperventilating with it all and by and you, you have to like wince and close your eyes to kind of stop it's not even a pain it's like a maybe a masochistic pleasure pain and then when you open your eyes you look and the book is no longer in your hands and the mad poet says Laos seeks a city called Noruzavan. If you wish to learn of its location in your world, you must seek the writings in the Necronomicon. And he points to the book in his hands. And he says, my copy, however, is of no use to you. And he riffles through the pages and you see they are all blank. However, you can peruse the genuine Necronomicon at a university of the occult called the Mysterium in the Kadiran city of Kathir. I provided the same information to the Count that I just shared with you. So Laos is most likely headed to Kathir to obtain the Necronomicon as well. However, the man, Laos, that you seek is not what he seems. The great old one, Shaman Dor, has infected him. I believe that he intends to use the Star Stele in both Thrushmore and Neruzavan to mock Golarion so that it can be brought into Carcosa. Doing so would help fully awaken Jamindor, and Laos would become the Great Old One's champion for completing the task. He looks at each of you. He looks over at his hut. He looks at the reflecting pool and what remains of the tree. Our time here is coming to an end. But before it does, I would like to offer you one more thing in return for your gifts. Though you seek Laos, I can see that you also seek more. You seek truth and your memories. Either those that were taken from you or those you chose to bury, to suppress. I would like to give you a chance to taste the future as well as the past by allowing you all to speak with the king of Naruzavan. Step into the waters of the oasis. The king lies within. And he folds his hands and stares at you all. Well, I was going to ask him something. <laughs> but that seemed pretty fine. Also, if we step in there, we get all the knowledge of our past. Perhaps. perhaps. Seems to be what he's implying. Memories. I must know. I must know what happened. And Atticus will start to walk toward the pool. No, wait, Atticus, I grab him by the shoulders. I want to go first. (laughs) (laughs) 
I can see you have a greater wisdom. <laughs> no, <laughs> let my wisdom be the guide your way. <laughs> I'm content to watch. Yeah. <laughs> For right now. Suki. Uh, oh, I, here I go. Oh, I'll go. I just want to wait for one of these. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to watch first. first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going in. Just after that guy. Right, right. <laughs> How's the water? <laughs> Aldo and Atticus appropriately step in first. And when you do, you look down and you see in the reflection a scene play out. A scene of the last time that you were here at the Oasis when the mad poet made the same offer to Lowell's step into the waters to speak with the king of Nuruzavan. But you watch in the reflection as Lowell's steps in and drags each of you as well and shoves your face into the pool. And then you just like, imagine we had a camera looking up at your reflection as you're like drowning and writhing under the water until finally both of your faces go blank and distant. And a thin mist then leeches from the heads of your reflections and the mists contain Images like these vignettes that are just back to back to back of Lowell's like shaking your hand, Aldo, Atticus, Burl, Mrs. O'Lady, Furble, and Halster in a busy market. Then all of you arriving at Iris Hill, all of you performing various unsavory tasks at Lowell's direction, killing in some instances, and then finally seeing Lowell's bringing you in a semi-catatonic state to Briarstone Asylum. Furble, Eris, and Suki, you're waiting and you're watching and you see them just looking at these reflections. Do you join them? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, literally, Troy? Wriggling is what I do eighth best. <laughs> That's true. That's pre-established. Pre-established. canon. <laughs> canon. It's canon. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and put your. I want to see where you guys are standing near the pool. Okay. Oh, that must be just totally normal and regular. We've got this beautiful map. We might as well use it. So I imagine we went up to the guy first in the bench. So maybe Eris would be there. Okay, so Eris steps to sort of the, uh, the far right. Oh no. Oh boy. Tiny oh. Murder Clown goes in. She's gonna go over here. And I guess they'll step behind Tiny Murder Clown. <laughs> <laughs> I just like push him into the pool ahead of him. <laughs> oh, splish splash. Step into the pool and Furble, you see everything that they saw because you went through all of this yeah. with Laos and, and, and you're just bombarded by these memories that immediately when you see them, they become familiar. Suki and Eris, you see things in the water as well. Suki, we see you climbing a tree with a young girl, a young elven girl that looks just like you. You're young as well. And both of you are climbing and you're looking at her. Perhaps she's climbing a little faster than you. And then you get to the top, you stand on a branch, and we just see something happen between the two of you and an argument ensues. And it gets heated very quickly to the point where she pushes you. And then you, with all your strength, push her back, but she loses her footing and slips. You try to reach out to grab her, but it's too late. And she falls from the branch, a hundred feet down to the ground and lies in a broken pile. Eris, you see yourself lost in a forest somewhere. There's a girl with you as well, younger, similar features to you, but you both look hurt, 
emaciated. And then you come to a clearing in the forest and an old woman emerges from the darkness up ahead. She has a pack on her back with bones sticking out of it and carries a long broom with a strange totem at the end of it. She walks over to you, Eris, and sees your wounds. Maybe you got like a cut on your leg and she just rubs her hand across the cut and as she does, it disappears. But we see like an energy transfer happen as she does that, like energy from her hand is entering you. Maybe your eyes are closed, wincing from this pain, but when she finishes, they dart open and there is a connection between you and this old woman who is immediately gone. From there, we cut to the interior of a house where two people lie asleep in a bed together, an older man and a woman. As they adjust themselves in their sleep, we can see that they have the telltale marks of being flesh warps. Maybe the older woman even has a neck mouth like you. And as we see them sleeping, we pan around to where Eris is standing, staring at them with that same glare in her eyes with which she looked at the old woman. Your hands go out toward them, your fingers splayed as you cast organ sight and can see inside of them at their vital areas. And then you watch yourself butcher them in their sleep. That's some dark shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Damn, Kate. I was in a prison on the moon. <laughs> I know. It's a prison on the moon, man. <laughs> you all watch these things happen, and the mists are now all intermingling with each other, coiling beneath the water, and then the mists start to rise to the surface, and when they break the surface, Aldo, Atticus, and Furble suddenly regain all of their memories. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. okay. In like a dizzying flash. Yeah. Everything they forgot about themselves immediately comes back. Ooh. <laughs> And you're just sitting there, wide-eyed, yet again, third time in like ten minutes where you've been bombarded by too much knowledge. A lot has happened today. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look back down at the water, and your reflections are still there, but they're staring at you, blankly, until all of a sudden, every single one of your reflections reaches out of the water at you. Roll for initiative. No! Oh, no! It's gonna be so bad. This is so bad. Oh, man. Yeah. It's not yeah. Good. Oh, this is no good. I've done yeah. some things I regret. <laughs> like, coming here now. Like, what? <laughs> it's party time, folks. Uh, let's fucking go. Eldo, what'd you get, buddy? Uh, 18 for Eldo. <laughs> uh, Tiny Murder Club. Uh, I got a, uh, 34. 34! Oh. Tell them where you got this die that rolled that yes, sweet I nat 19. Die. The folks at Ritual Cast, Miz, thank you for this die. Rolled a 19 on its first roll. Sweet. <laughs> thank you. Natty 19. Eris? 14. Ooh. Atticus. Oh. I was very excited about this die that I got in LA. That was your first mistake. God! To feel joy. To feel joy. Uh, 20. 20. Okay. Uh, Suki. 19. Oh. Brutal! Brutal initiative! Terrible. You, you all laughed when Tiny Murder Clown showed up, but he won initiative. Yeah. <laughs> No, we need him right now. Like this is this is great. <laughs> there are certain situations where you're glad Charles Manson is there. Right? <laughs> there are very few, but this is one of them. <laughs> like if you're recording a Beach Boys album. <laughs> yeah, like for example, yes. Uh, Pet Sounds is missing something. <laughs> Where's Charlie? <laughs> 
You can all see your reflection standing right in front of you. Tiny murder clown, what the hell do you want to do? Stop looking at me! And I'm gonna flurry of blows this thing. <laughs> You're gonna punch yourself? What? You gonna punch yourself? Why are yeah. you punching yourself? Stop hitting yourself. Stop Why hitting are you yourself? punching yourself? Uh, first is a 31. A 31. Second is a 23. That is a hit and a miss. What? Hit and a miss. This is a flurry of blows, right? Ba boom. Ba boom. Shaboom. Shaboygan. I got a total of 27 points of damage. Ooh. 27. Ooh. Let's wipe that smile off your face, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate you. Now I see why everyone hates me. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You punch away, and uh, you still have one action left. Oh, um, oh, how about a third attack? Uh, 21 is a miss, right? 21 is a miss. Go, you stupid, slimy, squealy little shit. You punch away at this thing. Aldo, you see your reflection. Look at you and smile. Oh, man. As it the then looks at Eris. Did with the same anger that you've been looking at, Eris. Oh, with lately. Ooh. Sidebar? Sidebar? I don't play as often as you guys. I have Stunning Fist. He needs to make a DC 27 uh, uh, save, or else he's stunned. Is that a will save? It's a or fortitude, fortitude save. save. Okay, okay. Natural one. <laughs> It's not really. It's not really. It's the actual one. We like to we like to just shoehorn Nick in. I haven't had a lot of chances yet to use the board. Sorry, so he's trying to strike the trigger with a fortune save, or I am or stunned one, or stunned three on a crit fail. Oh shit! <laughs> go, go Vikings, I guess. Wow, stun three. All right, so it is going to be out of commission for a round. You know, <laughs> I've always thought I must have the most delicious soul. <laughs> Aldo's reflection, like I said, looked at Aldo and smiled, almost like you were friends and teammates. And then it takes a uh, step back and throws a bomb at Eris. No! No! What? No! What kind of bomb do I want to throw? How about a little bottle of lightning? No, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not a great roll. That is a 22 to hit, Eris. Miss. All right. All right, uh, I will throw a second one. Uh, horrible roll, 17. Miss. All right, so two bottled lightnings come at Eris, and he gives a kind of angry, like Skid would be if he missed two bottles of lightning. <laughs> Try to imagine if you can. <laughs> All right, it is now Atticus's reflection. Uh, should I ask about splash damage? Yes. I no. think you should. To me, made it seem like it was going to be good for us, but now I realize it's bad for us. Oh, I thought for a second you were like improving. No. I was like, should I mention the splash damage? And she went, definitely. Uh, all right, so. <laughs> Eris and Aldo take four points of splash damage. Actually, no. eight points of splash damage. No. Like, Wait, is it or is it only the person that you were attacking? No. Oh, uh, he's just like you. So if you can choose, yeah, no, he can it's choose. it's only the target. Only the target. On a miss. Yeah. Okay. Hit oh, no, on a miss. On a miss. Yeah. Okay, great. So then that is going to be eight points of damage to Eris. Electricity damage. Thank you, Joe. You're a good teacher's pen. <laughs> I like you so much. It's going to be your reflections turn. Uh, and let's see. He is standing right next to you. And he looks at you, and he does. He, I mean, he does exactly what you do when you this cast your spells. I do so much. How many times did you look in the mirror back in the day when you were practicing? Dude, not just in the mirror. Yeah. 
This is not the first time we've done this, is it? He casts a spell on you, and I need you to roll a fortitude save. That's gotta be the worst possible one. <laughs> oh. Actually, it's not. Okay. Here we go. Fortitude save. I don't know which terrible die to use. <laughs> bad near Fortitude save. Go! Is my reflection also stupefied too? (laughs) (laughs) Took a shot. Uh, 34. Oh, 34? All right, this is a line effect. Suki, I need you to roll it as well. Oh. Fortitude (laughs) save. Okay. That's gonna be a 31. 31. You both saved. Yes. Against enervation. Oh, my God. So that's still going to be 2d8 persistent negative damage, even on a success. Oh so is this God. thing an exact replica of me at my level with all my shit? Don't worry about it. Oh, dude, you guys are fucked. <laughs> this is going to be bad. <laughs> all right, so 2d8 Just stun him. persistent negative damage. Uh, and then he's going to take a, uh, a step back to the side to create a little distance between you and the rest of the party. And then it would have been uh, Tiny Murder Clown's Reflections turn, but he's stunned three. Yeah, what's up? Woo-hoo. I'll see you next round. It's fake Eris' turn. Oh, no, not fake Eris. so Eris. mad right now. You asked us for like a PDF of our character sheets. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Really, yeah. Like, that's yeah. why. There's like you a know? track. Yeah, I just need we to make a couple. Responded. I, I just need to make a couple secret checks, you guys. Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to get recall knowledge right for the yeah. first time ever. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm making you all Easter gifts. <laughs> I, just, I want to have your uh, character sheets framed so you can hang them on your walls. <laughs> uh, fake heiress stands back and belches forth a swarm of vermin. No. It's going to be a 30-foot cone, so I'd like a oh, basic no. reflex save from Eris, Aldo, and Tiny Murder Clown. What? No. Oh, man. Uh, oh. Uh, no. Okay. And, Fine. and, Suki. 31. Uh, what don't you like? Atticus is going to use... Can he use a reaction before he acts? Yes. Yeah, one per round. Even as far if I as you know, I'm not 100% sure. Crowd, can he use a reaction before he acts? In two yeah. Yeah. Very mixed reaction. It's very mixed reaction. No, it's like, I thought like flat-footed before your turn was not a thing anymore. It's not, but it may be a different rule about reactions. You can use one reaction per round. I wish we had some sort of source of authority yes. here up on yes. stage yes. that could answer this right. question. Here it is. Once your first turn begins, you gain your actions and reactions. Yes. All right, great. Good to know. The answer is yes. So, um, but all right, because you didn't know, save. I won't let you use Okay. What are you going to do? Uh, 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 oh, I love that you went to the crowd first for yes, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of like that, too. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, what would you do? 29. What, what are you doing? Just a reflex save? 29? Yeah, okay. I can't do the reaction. So. Uh, Suki? 24. That's a fail. Uh, can I say it? 31. Oh. 31. Natural 20. Oh! Uh, it's a 39 if it matters. All right, so Mona, you take no damage. Uh, who failed? Uh, Suki, you take 11 points of damage in your second one, and then five points of damage for Eris and Atticus. Okay. I hate that all your names sound very similar. Yeah, yeah I, really, I gotta start killing some of you guys. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> All right, that was a, uh, a two-action situation, and then uh, Eris's reflection will also stand back. God, you guys are all such shitty initiative. I have to go. I have to go again. Uh, it's Fake Suki's turn. Uh, all right. Uh, fake Suki. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
recognize fake Suki. No, well, she's so used to you denigrating her every time you speak to her that that was just an <laughs> instinctive reaction. Fake Suki. Uh, how about a hydraulic torrent? That sounds fun. Oh, oh that's a high-level spell I have. Sure is. I'm going to move into position so I can hit a ton of you. Uh, hydraulic torrent. I get to make it safe. Is going to be a 60-foot line. Man. <laughs> oh, my God. That's beautiful. That's going to be... Uh, Dude, a PC-only fight is really Wait, did I move real Suki? What? Fuck, where was Suki? I'm was there. Sure where she was? Yeah. Oh, shit. Huh? Well, well, you can't do your little line, can you? I guess I can just do that. Uh, Come all right, so on. it's going to be oh, no. Atticus and Sukes. Oh, on. no. Atticus and Sukes, give me a fortitude save. Don't worry, I know the DC, because it's my spell. Is it? I don't know. God. I'm due, I'm due. No! <laughs> On the one spell that will make me lose my turn, this is horrendous. What did you get? Uh, what was it, Fortitude? Yeah. yeah. 21. 21. And Sukes? 30. All right. 30 is a pass. 21 is a fail against Hydraulic Torrent. So you're going to take some bludgeoning damage to the tune of 8d6. Oh, no. This is so it is yummy. So 30 points of damage to Atticus. 15 points of damage to Silky. Why? And Why is this happening? <laughs> this guy was just giving us knowledge. Why? You questioning the mad poet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> another elixir that just got. Oh, no. We didn't have six left. That six. fell out of. When Suki got hit, it fell out of her uh, purse. <laughs> stop, please. They're very important. Please stop dropping them. I let Pepsi hold one. That was a mistake. He doesn't have hands. <laughs> All right, uh, Suki, you pass, however, Atticus, on your failure, you get pushed back five feet as well. And it now, finally, I can take a break and just listen to you guys do stuff. Atticus, what do you want to do? He's like, Dwah! gets hit in the back with this hydraulic torrent. Uh, but at least he keeps, uh, this, I mean, so he's just standing in this pool? Yeah. Uh, he'll look across at his reflection in melee, basically, eye to eye. Like I said, he's done this before. Everything you do, he does. Yeah, exactly. He is, he, if you remember, he has worked on images of himself to use as illusions and distractions. And he looks across at the illusory version of himself, but he feels something deeper, something that tells him that this creature is him and he hates him. And he is going to really find out if this creature is him because he is going to cast. He begins casting and says, let us find out, shall we? With such hate dripping in his eyes, and he casts Phantasmal Killer oh! on himself. Oh, shit. You know what you're scared of, buddy. Yeah, wow. oh, I yeah. sure do. Okay. If I can, yeah, so as he casts the spell, the, uh, well, I don't know if this thing even has a mind, but basically, he begins to see everyone of his family and friends, every rat folk that he grew up with, that he stepped on and threw to the side in his attempt to become loved and admired and famous among rich people, among rich humans. His desire to be this famous illusionist, he just shed all of these relationships, his sister, his 19 brothers. He just <laughs> fucking stepped on all of them along the way and didn't give two shits. And that's in the image is them rising out of the water to just start stabbing this thing to death as a, uh, as a, um, in revenge for what he had done to them. And, uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to roll a, a will save. It's time to bring out old neon green. Oh, no. Will save. Troy's gonna roll. Troy's gonna roll. Your Twenty-four. Oh! <laughs> He's got the app out. There's so many dice. He said he has so many times. <laughs> He's 
so many times. Uh, if this thing is, is can take this kind of damage, he takes 8d6 mental damage, which totals 27 points of damage. Nice. Okay. And he is frightened too. Oh, shit. Frightened too. Okay. Still up. Do I have to roll anything else? No, only if you critically fail does, like, you could possibly die on the spot, but... Yikes! He did not crit- I'm just happy he failed at all, because I'm st Oh! <laughs> what did you forget? I am cursed! Oh! God, oh, that's I just right. want to roleplay and have fun. You're stupefied. And instead, this dumb game makes me have to- This sucks. right here! He's sitting right here, Joe. <laughs> what the <laughs> fucking <laughs> fail! <laughs> I rolled a natural six. Would you like to use your Seattle bottle cap? I have a Seattle bottle cap. Should I get one? Yes. Should I get one? Yes. I love you guys. Natural seven. Oh, yeah. Joe's got a Joe. Joe's got a Joe. Oh, you're a good man, LaValley. Uh, I don't care what they say about you. <laughs> I'll talk. <laughs> we have a lot to say. Uh, all right, so Frightened 2, 27 points of damage, and you are bottle capless. Yeah, that's true. Which is the most important part. Do you have any uh, actions left, my friend? Uh, yeah, sure does, good buddy. Sure and does. He is going to create distance. So he is going to move uh, away from this entire encounter uh, in an attempt. He's just, oh, good luck, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Atticus creates some space. Right to the edge of the map. And there he goes. He's off the map. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's just trying to step away because he sees that we're now in a fight against uh, quite a few casters and powerful ranged combatants. So he's trying to make it so that there aren't clumps of allies together to mess with. So. It is now Suki's turn. Okay. Suki is going to first wretch because I need to not be sick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh... <laughs> Wretch again. It's a 23 fortitude. Uh, wait, so to remove second, it's just uh, another fortitude save against the original DC of the John? No, I thought it was. Am I wrong? Joe is oh, making. just rolling dice? Joe is making big hand motions. I spend a single action. You can willingly uh, spend a, an attempt action. a fortitude save against the DC of the effect that made you second. That's what I, yeah, that's what I just asked. Uh, what are you doing big hand motions for, Joe? You failed. Cool. Sidebar. Yes. I have persistent negative damage. You do. 2d8. 2d8. Persistent neg. Nine oh. points of damage. Natty. They have failure. Damn it. <laughs> so that remains persistent. Thank you for being honest. Uh, all right, Sooks, you wretched and failed. That's one action. Uh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> then I'm going to cast Electric Arc at Suki, the other Suki, not myself. And, uh, sorry, the, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Okay. Boom. And uh, Atticus, the uh, illusion or double Atticus, because I can okay. do two creatures. So you need to make a reflex save. Okay. Uh, all right, so the, you're casting against who? Atticus and? Suki. Atticus and Suki. This is very confusing. Uh, it's not okay. that confusing. You're not on my side. Oh, oh, it's an arc. It leaps. Here we go. Uh, first roll for Atticus is a 28. That. Second roll, ooh, for Suki is a 22. That fails. Nice. So uh, that is going to be, what did I roll? 16, 17, 18 points of electricity damage to Suki, uh, and then half that to Atticus. Nine. Nine to Atticus. All and right. that's my turn. Fake Atticus is fucked up. Good. Ah. Yes. He looks at him. He's just like, you're so weak. So pathetic. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. You're, you're in a 
terrible position. I would rearrange myself away from this combat if I were you. Suki, you take two points of negative energy damage. Give me a uh, flat check. Okay. Eight. Eight. All right, so you will continue taking it. Sorry. Why did you make that sound awful? It sounded weird. Uh, It is now Aldo's turn. Hooray. Aldo will take a five foot step back from the pool. Okay. And he saw this hatred in his reflection's eyes towards Eris. And he's sort of a. He's seeing like. Him seeing himself in this way from this perspective, he's ashamed that he's just like, it's just like, oh, like, if, even if this did happen, if this was Eris's, a result of, of something that had happened to Eris, it's not necessarily her fault. It's not something I, not necessarily something I can blame her for. And so, th- this, in addition to his subtly increased wisdom, has an effect on how he sees the world. <laughs> and uh, he's going to take a, as a step back, and he's going to toss a bottle of lightning at himself. Okay. Wow. Very cathartic moment there. <laughs> it just took your own reflection fighting you to realize the error of your ways. That is, I really want to hit. That is a hit. All right. Uh, that is 11 points of electricity damage. Okay. And myself is flat-footed. Uh, <laughs> until, myself until, is flat-footed. Until the beginning of my turn. Okay. Uh, you got one more action there. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to throw an alchemist fire at my... Oh, and there's uh, four points of damage to, to the reflection of Atticus. Next, it's Atticus, right? No, it's oh, t- no, no. Tiny, 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 tiny Murder Clown. Tiny Murder Clown. Little splash to the clown. Got you. The, clown. the real clown or the fake one? Fake clown. Fake clown. <laughs> Thank God. What? Four, four clown splash. Uh, and that is a, that is a, uh, 29 to hit with the Alchemist Fire. That's another hit, buddy. Nice. Whoa. Nice. Nice. You're hot. Ooh. Uh, okay, that is 16 points of fire damage. Oh. Uh, and four points of splash damage to the reflection of Tiny Murder Clown, and my reflection is on fire and suffering persistent fire damage. Wow! I love it! I love it! You guys are having a great round. We're our own worst enemies. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you remember how every combat in this AP, we always almost die immediately when we yeah. fight anything? Finally! Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> only one can stand. Eris, you are up. There can only be one, so <laughs> I'm going to fire off one magic missile. Okay. Just one? Just one, because I'm going to do something else, obviously. At yourself? Um, yeah, at myself. Okay. Go Give me that myself. damage. So that's three points of damage. Okay. And then, at, well, wait, I want to make I want to make this uh, clear. Okay. I'm firing it at the poppet. Ooh. Oh yeah. Three points of damage to her poppet, to her familiar. How dare yeah. you? And with that, I see where it is. I guess. So I cast, use two actions, rip the spirit on that familiar. You think you would just come up here and play my character better than me? Three points of damage to the poppet. How many hit points does your poppet have? Oh, you don't know? I just want to know what your pop is. 45 hit points. 45 hit points. Okay. (laughs) And now you're casting Rip the Spirit on your reflection. On my reflections, pop it. On your reflections, pop it. (laughs) Alrighty. (laughs) So it, it makes a basic fortitude save. Basic fortitude save. And its fortitude is plus 16. Well, I know what its fortitude is. Another natural one. I'm done with neon green. You always get a skin uh, with your die. Natural one. Yes. Yes. So what, what does this do? Well, you're the pop 
profit is drained one. Okay. Um, you take 10d6 negative damage. Oh my god. So I guess I roll 10d6 now. Roll your 10d6. What happens if Fine. you kill my poppet? Are you rolling a d6? She's rolling times. one at a time. She's rolling one d6 at a time. Let's just she literally it. started by going, oh, I can't do this. I lost count already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it always go to the bathroom. points of damage, which means the poppet's yeah. dead. Your three-point magic missile, and that was oh, the deciding was factor. Yeah. Yeah. Genius! They're learning. <laughs> Do you have any other actions left? No, that was it. That was all right. Player. That was it. It is the top of round two. Oh, that was so We're awesome. staying here all night. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny this is gonna a, class. This is gonna be a four. All right. <laughs> So my grim reflection is knocked out right now. Stunned Stun three, can't act, and I am mad. I, you look mad. Yeah. And I'm like, how could you fall for that? Count lols, you stupid idiot! And I'm gonna flurry of blows him one more time. Okay. I'm gonna use this awesome die, which is so far rolled 19 and 20. Nice. Uh, Woo. And I rolled a fucking two. Uh, so that's not good, but I got one more. I got okay. One more. Give me a second, please. Uh, that is uh, a... <laughs> Sounds like a miss. Well, it's probably a miss. Uh, 24? 24. It's stunned, so it doesn't have a Stun doesn't zero. affect his it doesn't AC, have it doesn't sadly. Have oh, so that sure. is a miss. Also, I'm I, gonna, don't, I don't think... I'm going to change that real quick in the rules, officially. <laughs> So I miss it, and I, I miss, I miss. You miss? Yeah, yeah, but I have one more action yet. What do you yeah. do? I take my hand, and I put it on the forehead of my stunned reflection, and I say, if you won't die from fists, then die from drowning, you fool! And I push it under the surface <laughs> of the water. <laughs> so near as I can tell what that means. <laughs> Thinking maybe a grapple? It needs a DC, no, fuck oh. that. It needs a DC 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking stunned. I need a decent, well, yeah, I don't know. Do I need to hit it? I'm not really sure. What do you want to do? You I want to push it under water and make it make a fort save or fucking die. Okay. So want. It's a DC 20 fort save. DC 20 fort save? Yeah. Uh, we need to roll badly to lose, rolled, but it's happened before. I rolled a 30. Uh, a 3? 30. A 3? <laughs> <laughs> It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> he doesn't drown, he doesn't drown. But he's so, wet now. But I'm like very much like I want him to. <laughs> you got him right where you want him. Yeah, that's it for me. It is fake Aldo's turn. Fake Aldo thought that him and real Aldo were friends. Apparently not. So fake Aldo will stride up to real Aldo. Does Tiny Murder Clown have a reaction? Uh, yeah. You may take said reaction if you'd like. Uh, are you saying do I have attack opportunity? Yes. That's the reaction I meant. That is a little different, and the answer is that I don't think I do. You don't. This thing walks up to Aldo and just touches you. No! 
Another, when I think about you, I touch my soul. I rolled another fucking natural one. Oh, on yeah. the Yeah, it is a named character. Yeah. And is it magic? No, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's an attack. It's a physical melee. Attack. Oh, oh, oh. All right, what do you got? This one is from Daniel in Seattle, Washington. Is there a Daniel in the crowd tonight? There's probably. Yeah, Daniel, All right. watch your back after the show. <laughs> Seattle, Daniel says. You're as cold as ice. Oh my god. Oh. It's amazing. It's a skid fumble. It's amazing. Oh. oh. Orphonio. <laughs> That's a deep cut. You gotta be in. Are you? He was there. Eric was there. He was there then when that happened. Okay. Orphonio's. Tell who Orphonio is, very quick. Orphonio, if you remember Orphan Puncher at oh, yes. yeah. we had we had a session uh, after that that was, we, I don't think we ever sent it out, but it was just like, it was another PFS scenario, and uh, Orf <laughs> Orphan Puncher's next sort of evolution was he became very religious, and he invented a god named Orphonio, the god of orphans. <laughs> That he was very, very uh, fervent religiously, but he kept like switching back and forth. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so yeah. So as he described yeah. the the deity, the the dogma, everything about it, yeah, switched and flopped like every round, yeah. and it, you had no idea what was going on. Yeah, she so died in her sky coffin, thus becoming her own orphan. The, I remember that. Yes. It was so really all over. In that <laughs> spirit, Daniel from Seattle submits Orphonio. Orphonio's horrifying visage appears momentarily, and she bedevils you with her beauty. You find yourself confused for 1d3 rounds while, no! gaze, while gazing upon her eternal, eternally finite being. Yes! <laughs> May yes! she die and be born again, yes! that cursed goddess for whom you lust evermore. <laughs> Amazing. Confused is phenomenal. Yeah, Troy, you're gonna love it. The verbal component is watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Wow. Uh, okay, so you're confused uh, for one d three rounds. <laughs> Horrible. Let me roll the uh, the old oh, d three. I, I know how this is gonna go. Three rounds. <laughs> Daniel, I owe you, buddy. All right, so I'm flat. I was already flat-footed. I'll continue to be flat-footed for another three rounds. I don't treat anyone as my ally. Uh, I can't delay ready or use reactions. You use all of your actions to strike or cast offensive cantrips. And then it's basically against a random target, including everyone. Right, okay. So it's a big field right now. All right, so it goes, it strides up, goes to strike to Aldo, and it's like, oh, oh, sees this vision of a false god. Orphonio! Uh, Orphonio, save us! And then we'll go <laughs> to attack. <laughs> it's going to go to attack again. I'm going to say regular Tiny Murder Clown is a one, fake Tiny Murder Clown is a two, Eris is a three, Aldo is a four. Okay. And I'll roll it in front of Joe. Oh, that's Aldo again. Damn. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm putting me on green. Orphonio is a fickle goddess. <laughs> a fickle goddess. It's going to be another uh, uh, touch. A fickle goddess who never wavers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Praise her name and damn her to seven hells. <laughs> this is a uh, 35 to hit. That is, that is a critical hit. Oh. That is a critical hit. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, that is a critical hit. I rolled terribly. It's going to be 20 points of damage, though. Okay. Uh, what are you hitting him with? And I need a fortitude save. Okay. Aldo, you can just, like, unarmed attack people. Uh, yeah. 31. 31. 31. Fortitude save. You're okay. Okay. You just were, like... Uh, immediately plagued by like nightmares from your past as all of your memories are rushing forward all those memories that you suppressed are coming back and you felt a nightmare coming on and it immediately stopped 
That guy's confused for three more rounds. It is now fake Atticus's turn. Please kill some of these guys. I am exhausted. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, I love us. I love our group. I love our game. Everybody's amazing. If we were smart, what a smart group would do that doesn't care about role playing. Uh huh. Would focus down one person at a time. For sure. Everybody would just kill them and then we'd be done and we would have no problems. But everyone is like, I want to kill myself so yeah. bad. I, I want to KMS. And everyone is just attacking yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yeah. We're, We're following, following Sydney rules. <laughs> I want to kill myself. But I took out myself. Well, you I stopped really yourself. No, no, no. Okay. You were very strategic. You were great. You did also, very Joe, good. Joe, I just want to say, you can free action speak and tell us who we should attack. I, I didn't want to. I attacked myself. I loved it. All what right. I loved it. <laughs> There's a certain satisfaction in attacking yourself. Yeah, there sure. really is. Atticus yes. is Super going to stride thought. up to Atticus, and he's going to cast Phantasmal Killer on you. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. Isn't he out of the spell slot because he used it already and it's also him? You don't know what's going on back here. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no. Oh dear. I don't. Oh dear. This okay. Is bad. All right. This involves a die roll. And how many bottle caps do you have left? Zero, survey says. Kill. Quick, All say right. something really funny. You do. You do. This is my LA die that rolled shitty before, but I'm going to give Max and uh, what's your name? Max and Lauren? Was it? Yeah, Max and Lauren another chance. This Fun. never goes well. Never goes well when you roll a die. He's staring at the 20. It's a beautiful, very, very old die. It has a 20 plus year history in this other game. <laughs> Here it goes. Phantasmal killer. Yeah. I'm not even... I'm sick. I'm sick to my stomach. I believe it's a critical fail. I believe it is, in fact, exactly a critical fail. Well, you're not sure. My numbers may be different than yours. That is a 17. Oh! <laughs> That is a regular failure. Oh, okay, okay. However, you're However, still going to take 8d6 mental damage. Yeah, I think he could die. And you will be frightened too. Yeah. So it's still not good. No, it's very, very, very bad. And you take 30 points of mental damage. I yeah. am so mad you made up the numbers on that roll. <laughs> Just using an online dice roll. Uh, he is going to die. He goes down? I hope you're prepared for this, because he is actually going to die. I, that sounds like your problem. <laughs> Wait, that was, did you critically fail? No, he just failed. How do you die? Um, I think he's very low on hit points. And I have persistent death. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's right. But you're also, like, standing near a healer, right? What's that? Are you standing here? No. No. Ah, uh, yeah. Suki is a healer. <laughs> All right. Thank uh, you. But she doesn't heal people. I just Unless healed everyone. Uh, All right. So that's the end of Fake Addis Kiss's turn. Does he have, uh, what is that? That persistent damage? Let's make these little <laughs> notations. I don't know what the hell they mean. Uh, he does, oh, he has persistent fire from Aldo, right? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no that's, that's, that's fake well, Aldo. I don't know what that oh, is. Oh, no. Uh, He's know. frightened, too. That's what it was. Frightened, too. Oh, oh, right, because he was frightened, that lowered his DC, so it now oh. would have been... Uh, yeah, crit fail. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. okay, now he's frightened one. Thank you. Please don't be my turn. Damn it, it still is. All right, it's fake tiny murder clown. Fake tiny murder clown is no longer stunned, and he's going to do a flurry of blows on you. Okay. First attack. Oh, fucking hell, 21. Just garbage. Yeah. That's a miss. Yeah. <laughs> and then a tw uh, 25. Miss. So just boom, boom, miss, miss. And then we'll uh, step back to make you come to him. And now it is Fake Eris's turn. Fake Eris reaches out her hands to cast a spell, and nothing happens. And you see real Eris holding the soul of the poppet that she ripped. Oh! And the oh, fake no. poppet on the ground or in the water or wherever the hell you are. Awesome. Seattle Kate. Yes. Seattle Kate. Okay, baby. Okay. 
All right, fake Eris is mad. Fake Eris strides up to real Eris and goes to reach out to you just like fake Aldo did to real Aldo. That is a 37 to hit, Kate. Hit with what? Her hand. Her nails? No, her hand. She's smacking me? <laughs> Is that a critical hit? <laughs> no, well, wait. Yes. yes. Yeah, wait, what are you doing? Don't worry about it. You, you can't see what's back here. Yeah. They have other powers that we don't have. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah. it turns out. So that's a critical Pretty unfortunate. hit. That's going to be 36 points of damage. Um, uh, critical threat, I have a critical skill threat, critical, critical <laughs> feet called recognize spell. Um, okay. A creature within line of sight casts a spell. It is not a spell. It's not a spell. Okay. It's not a spell. You cannot she's cast spell. Punching, she's punching you so hard. They have other powers that they can use. This melee attack just crit. She has one more attack she'll take against you, and that is a 19 to hit. Miss. What was the original damage? Uh, the original damage was 36 points of damage, and then I need a fortitude save. Okay, just hold on. One thing at a time. I know. There's a lot going on. God. You should see what I got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Swear it! Fortitude save, you Fortitude say. save. Seattle's Kate. What was that? 17. I rolled a natural one. You are... Oh! oh I can't wait all the time! That. You, uh... Oh, you oh, Bottle cap! Bottle cap! Bottle cap! Bottle cap. Bottle cap. I'm rolling again. I'm rolling again. Don't even... Don't even. Shush. Just your mouth when you're talking to me! Okay, this is way better. 30. <laughs> You're all right. Now it's fake Suki's turn. Suki, 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 Suki is standing next to Suki, and Suki strikes Suki. <laughs> it's Suki versus Suki tonight, and. <laughs> uh, how about I come after you with a verdict whip? You're using my bean against me? Yep. <laughs> Here she comes. She's flicking the bean. <laughs> Rats. 31 to hit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Come back here, D4. And your whip sucks. It's only six points of damage. Yes, yeah, it's weak. That's why I want to retrain that bean. She takes the whip, throws it idiot? in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Uh, that's your only. Your character stinks. That's your only. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny because I had this conversation. This is a terrible. Joe's like, why aren't you doing your cool spells? And he looks over and he's like, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about like a month or two ago where I was like, Froden Whip sucks. Yeah, it was. What is this? It was a flavor thing. I've been meaning to retrain it. We just haven't had any downtime. When you said you were gonna do that, I was like, yes. <laughs> Stupid. All right, well, now I'm going to cast Searing Light on you. Are you really? Yup. Because that's two actions. Yeah. And you have to interact action with the bean to do the whip. Oh, I gotta interact with the bean, bro. And then you attack. I gotta interact with the bean, bro. So I have to interact and then strike as and two different attack. actions? You win this round, Suki. With my stupid feet. How to flick my bean, wave. <laughs> Just kidding. Yikes. <laughs> In humor, there is truth. <laughs> is it my turn? She <laughs> cowers. <laughs> the um, the shadow cowers away from you after away from you after another unsatisfied evening. <laughs> It is now real Atticus's turn. Come he's, on, Atticus, come on! He's in bad shape. This is the end. This the is the final end. act of Atticus. And of course, it will be terrible. <laughs> I need you all to pick up the pace. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you appreciate what's happening here. I do. It's 10.04. Is happening. it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. Well, I guess for a final act, 
it would be best to unleash everything you have. Yes. Even though it will fail. Probably. Atticus will begin casting a spell of great power as disturbing the sands of this desert oasis. An otherworldly cold begins to gather in front of him. Oh, shit. Oh. But I have to roll a flat check because I'm stupefied. Oh, shit. Come on. I'm just going to do it now. Come on, Atticus. Don't <laughs> don't go out with a whimper. Natural one. And fucking five years of playing a character in every great city in America. <laughs> Ends with a natural one. As the cold fizzles in front of him, and he loses his cone of cold, the most powerful spell in his repertoire. Oh my god. Oh. Because of this horrible game! <laughs> Can we tell the story from the flight? <laughs> <laughs> There's no time. There's no time. There's no time, Kate. Okay. This, this is his tenth natural one of the weekend. That's all I'm gonna say. Basically. Um, he'll try to not go out like that. Oh, brutal. Because man. this is it. Last march of the end. He will cast with his final action a single magic missile at himself. Oh. <laughs> and he does cast that. Uh, so he will hit himself with max damage. Five points of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then 2d8 persistent negative damage, if you, if you please. I will, please. Would you like to roll your flat check? Two? Twelve points. Yeah, That's so ridiculous. Roll two for her. Twelve for me. He had four hit points left. Oh, no. So he is dying. One. Atticus falls to dying one. Flat check on the persistent you need negative to get rid of damage. This. You need to fail. Oh god. You hate to see it. Suki. Frick. Um, I was, I really wanted to heal Atticus, but I think I need to do... <laughs> what is the next thing that's going to come out of your mouth? <laughs> what could possibly be the next thing <laughs> that comes out of your mouth? <laughs> I was going to use a damage spell in a line to hit fake Atticus and fake Suki. But, wait, you said I was going to... I can't do both. Right. So I either heal you or I do damage. And you, one seems you, you less... might survive another round. That is true. That is true. What? I will definitely survive another round. Right, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if I hit okay. them, at least I can knock them out. Yeah, exactly. I still have the heal spell. I'm not wasting it on anyone else. Suki is going to move. Slides over. Uh, to get within a line. But what if you die this round? Well, c'est la vie, baby. <laughs> uh, Suki's going to get in formation to hit fake Suki and add to kiss with <laughs> hydraulic touring, bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about a taste of your own medicine, oh my. Uh, You have to make a fortitude save, please. Fortitude save. Uh, that is a 31 and a 24. 24 fails. Okay, that was Atticus. So that is going to be... That is 8d6, 32... Plus, knock back five feet of crit failure, it wasn't. All right, so 32 points of damage. 32 to and Atticus, then and then half, half to, to fake uh, Suki. To fake Suki. All right. That's the end of my turn. It's a hell of a turn. Hell of a turn, Suki. It is now Aldo's turn. 
All right. Aldo is, like, he sees the desperation of the situation and the server's picking up the checks. <laughs> and uh, he's going to throw a uh, another bottle of lightning at fake Atticus. Uh, fake Atticus. Uh, that is a 28 to hit. That is a hit. Oh, that'll hit that crappy character. Nice work. Oh, sweet. Okay, that is 16 points of damage. Flat-footed. Oh, he's not flat-footed. He's down. Fuck yeah! He should be the first to go. One down. Okay. And uh, he is going to spend his last action to throw a blight bomb at himself. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, That is a 30 to hit. 30 to hit is a hit. Okay. Uh, that is... Ooh, okay. That is 11 points of poison damage. Okay. And they have uh, 2d6 or 2d4 persistent poison damage as well. Okay. Okay. And that was it. All right. Did I take the persistent fire damage? I don't think I did. Uh, I don't think you did. I didn't so take it on my turn. That's... So- that's two points of damage. Two points of percent. And then the flat check. Gotcha. Okay. Um, still on fire. Okay. Nice. Um, flat awesome. fire. Okay. All right. Great. Eris. Hey. So. Hey. <laughs> Eris, you got messed up by yourself. Yeah. I'm not feeling great, so I'm not confident in just, like, pummeling for damage and not helping myself. And I'm surrounded by ghosts of everyone else. So I'm going to cast Mirror Image on myself. Nice. First of all. Okay. Um, and second of all, I'm also going to cast Needle of Vengeance against fake me towards real me. Okay. So if you hit Ooh. me again, if you hit me one more time or two or three or whatever, you're getting damaged. Okay. Needle of Vengeance. Yeah. Do I have to roll anything? Do you have to roll anything? Against Needle of Can you roll a basic will save? Okay. Uh, natural two. Oh! Oh, there we go. Yeah. For a uh, 16. Okay, it doesn't give me any description, so I'm assuming if you fail, that means that the spell goes through, versus if you pass, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, Type that's a spell. basic save. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's basic a- save means it would take double damage from yeah. your Needle of Vengeance. It says basic It's gotta be will. a critical fail, right? Yeah, that is a critical fail. Yeah. It is a critical damage. fail, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so double damage. Amazing. So it takes two mental damage anytime it uses a hostile action. So it would be... Well, it, it takes ten mental damage. Ten, so it'll be twenty. It takes twenty, right? Yeah, it'll yeah. take twenty. Twenty. Okay, that's okay. Uh, pretty good. Take Anything it. else, Urs? Um, nope, that's all my actions. Round three. You notice at this point, uh, Abdul al read the man poet, has simply walked back into his house. I know, this guy, I was like, I want to spend a seek action just looking looking at this dude. <laughs> like, come on, man. See ya. Tiny Murder Clown. We need a big round out of you, buddy. Okay, Tiny Murder Clown pulls back his fist as if to punch himself again, and then out of the corner of his eye, he, he sees Atticus in his difficult condition. <laughs> and he says, mm, I can only lose so many friends. I can't even lose the rat. And he's gonna move. <laughs> First action to Atticus's side. Oh. Section a- second action is taking out the potion or the elixir that Aldo gave him. Oh. Wait for it. Oh. Third action, pour that fucker in his mouth. Wow. Uh, that is going to be uh, 29 points of healing for you. Wow! wow. And if I can, it, as a free what? action, I whisper to Atticus, I'll always be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> this should forever change. No. The tiny murder clown. I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, all right, it's fake. In the 
it's fake Aldo's turn. Fake Aldo is going to start throwing some bombs, but he's still confused. And he's on fire. There's a lot going on. Uh, so praise Orphonio. Praise Orphonio. Praise Orphonio. The first bomb is going at fake tiny murder clown. Uh, so this is going to be a, uh, we'll make it an acid flask, moderate. And that is a natural 20. Uh, <laughs> oh! uh, don't worry about, I'm just going to do double damage to keep things moving. So that is uh, 2d6, so uh, 2d6 times 2 damage. Okay, so he's going to take 14 points of damage there. Nice, nice. Second action is going to be another bomb. This one is also at Fake Tiny Murder Club. Yeah! Uh, this will be a Blight Bomb. Uh, multiple attack penalty. That is a miss. And then the third action, I'm just going to keep throwing bombs. This one is at Fake Eris. Yeah. Uh, nat 3, so misses on that All right. one. Uh, and now he's both of them. Oh, yeah, splash damage. Yeah. So... It's four points of splash? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Razor Orphonio, curses be her name. Praise Orphonio. Uh, all right, now he's going to take the persistent fire and the persistent acid, or poison, rather. Uh, poison rolled. damage. I rolled a seven and a four on the flat checks. All right, that is seven points of poison damage. Okay. And two points of fire. Two points of fire. Okay, very good. And now it's got these so many characters. guys. <laughs> the credits of Troy, by the way, like it's hard enough to keep track yes. of your own character's abilities, <laughs> much less everyone's character's abilities. Very nice. so it's a nightmare scenario for a GM. It's a nightmare scenario. It's uh, thankfully fake Atticus is as shitty as real Atticus, so he's dead. <laughs> he um, makes it easy on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's uh, Fake Tiny Murder Clown's turn. Fake Tiny Murder Clown will use two stride actions to go up to real Tiny Murder Clown. No, oh, leave me alone! <laughs> what did I ever do to you? <laughs> except for everything. Except, then, yeah, except for everything. He's going to... Oh, I wish I had more actions. You've got, some, you've got some cool abilities. But Thank instead, you. he's just going to do one single fist. And it's a 32 to hit. That's a hit! Ooh. Oh okay. god, damn, that hurts. <laughs> is this what, what everyone feels else feels? Like? That is going to be wow. I would never roll this damage against Joe. It's only 13 points of damage. Oh, oh just punches you right in the nuts. Honestly, it's not that bad. <laughs> and now it is uh, fake Eris' turn. Fake Eris just looks at you and she's mad because her puppet's gone. First action, she draws a kukri. Hit me, bitch. And then with the second. <laughs> second Hit me with the piercing weapon, I hear you. She goes to strike. Natural 20. Oh, no. And takes 20 points of damage. <laughs> immediately takes 20 points of damage. Rocks over here for the valley. However, you will take... How much damage does your Cooper do? Only 1d6, right? Mirror image. Mm. Mirror image. Oh, yeah, mirror image, first of all. Oh. Thank you, audience. Oh, mirror image. Okay, how many images do you have? Um, hold on. Three. Okay. So what do I roll? D4? And you'll tell me what happens? Yes. Okay, please. Where's my D4? <laughs> one, one on a D4 is a hit. One on a d4 is a hit. I rolled a one. You're such a liar. I actually did. I rolled a little tiny one. But you only do 1d6 damage with your kukri. That's not very good. That's uh, why I don't do any of that. On a crit, you take two points of damage. Okay, also, also, You've taken also, all our powers also, away. make a fortitude save, you weirdo. What? I'm you! Yeah, but my wound yawns open disgustingly. <laughs> I rolled a natural two. Well. Uh, I assume that is going to be a critical fail. What's your DC? Uh, 27. That's a critical failure. Nice. nice. You're sickened two. Yes. Oh. By the sight of me. Sickened two. By the sight of yourself. You're sickened two. But you're me. 
Second two. All right. Man. Also, you take 20 points of mental damage. I took the 20 me. points of mental damage. <laughs> what the hell they put in that drink? <laughs> All right. She's going to... <laughs> she can't cast any spells. She's useless! I'm going to cry. I'm just going to cry. Uh, she's going, going to do? try and strike out again with the kukri. And she misses. And then she's just um, going to drown herself. But listen... <laughs> I think because you attempted to hit me, you still take the damage. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, hostile action. Is that Whenever you try to attack the specifically forbidden creature, me, you take the damage. Another 20 points of damage. <laughs> Boom. Well, just because you guys are terrible, she'll go to attack you again. And she misses and takes another 20 points. <laughs> you took 60 points of damage? I know, amazing. <laughs> Fake Suki's turn. Please kill some more of these. <laughs> We're working on it, man. Fake Suki. What are you going to do? Command Pepsi and add another character to the board? No. I... I am so limited by this character's piece. <laughs> he doesn't know how to play Druid. It's it just... looks like it was made by someone who's never played. <laughs> Oh, brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> now I'm gonna cast Searing Light, motherfucker! Hey, that's my spell! That's my <laughs> spell! do that. All right, this is gonna be a ranged spell, John. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me roll that. Where's my thing? Right. Spell attack. Yep. That is going to be a 26. Yeah, that, hit. that hits. Searing Light. Awesome. Let me just check one of my 70 tabs I have open. All right, so you failed, right? Yes. Well, you That's hit. That's a hit, rather. Success. Target takes full damage. That's going to be 5d6. Fire wait, damage. Wait, wait. Are you a fiend or undead? No, but wait, is it a DC or is it a spell attack? Is it's it a DC? spell attack. It's a spell yeah, attack. Okay, There's okay. no DC. Yeah. So All right, so you take 5d6 damage. Okay. Unless you're a fiend, you'll take more. I'm not. Are you a fiend? I'm you a take nice lady. 20 points <laughs> of searing light fire damage. You burn! Okay. And then she slides right up to you and she smiles and she says, Where's our sister? Ooh. How do you like that? Ouch. <laughs> I made her feel. <laughs> Atticus, you are back from the dead. You still have persistent negative energy damage and you're proud. <gasps> Suddenly back from the dead, still having persistent negative energy damage. He has no idea who on the battlefield is hurt the most. Um, man. Yeah, I just don't know who to unleash. So, uh, tiny murder clown, he opens his eyes. I need to go. That's me. Who did you? you? I saved your life. Uh, and God, he will try to save Tiny Murder Clown. I have very little kind. damage. So laying on his back, he just starts like violently like casting from his back. He's like, ah! uh, and I will roll a flat check, and I roll a natural one. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. It's. It's, you get your money. That's worth, the folks. end of his round. That, is, that was a three action casting of magic missile uh, heightened to third level. Can I give Joe my bottle cap? And it is lost. You want to give Joe your bottle cap? Oh, wow. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm going to allow it because it's so sad. <laughs> Some of these people only get to see you fail once a year in person. <laughs> so many wait, 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 wait. Tonight. In what session has Joe only failed once? <laughs> <laughs> I've been all right lately. This is, man, this turned. I want you to roll again. Do you want it? Yeah, take it. I'll take it. And I take want it. you to fail <laughs> again. For no one else. <laughs> For Tiny Murder. Uh, come on. Come on. He may be. Natural one. I I 
I didn't believe in luck until I met you. Wait, wait, we have to keep going. Skid, you have two bottle caps. Do you want to give one? I see, I need those bottle caps. No, no. No, I'll give you one of my two bottle caps. Roll the What? <laughs> this is a win-win for me, honestly. Statistically. <laughs> You're them so, all. so sad. Oh, it's so if that you roll another natural one, it's going to make me believe in God. <laughs> I'm going to clear the stage. <laughs> Fail, natural five. I'm going to give you my other bottle cap. This is the worst gambling fucking. <laughs> this is the worst you bet in the history of gambling. Yeah, you're basically an enabler at this point. <laughs> this is so preposterous. <laughs> that was probably a nat 20. And embarrassing. Oh, please, please, come please, come save on. my atheism. Come on! Natty 17. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Despite all his attempts, something in the universe focuses his dumb, stupid mind. It's Orphonio! <laughs> it's Orphonio and the power of Arabic! Yes! yes. <laughs> That's what it is. And he now speaks Arabic. I yeah, think. he does. Uh, that is 21 points of damage to Tiny Murder Clown as he is hit with six uh, double. magic missiles. <laughs> Tiny Murder Clown's double. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Joe. It was very confusing in the main I was laying on my back. I didn't know. 21 points of damage to Tiny Murder Clown, and it only cost five bottle caps. <laughs> Amazing. But, hey, on the upside, I'm no longer frightened. <laughs> but now you need to take 2d8 persistence. Oh, right. God. Uh, all right, you take five points. All right, that's not too bad. You can check Sony, natural four. <laughs> right back. We're right back. Right back. Okay, it is Suki's turn. Suki, we need a big one. Uh, Suki is going to cast <laughs> lightning bolt at fake Suki. Uh, it's a 120-foot line. Yeah. Uh, and after Suki asks... And you will hit Tiny Murder Clown. Yes. Yep, yeah, yes. the other one. Yeah. This is a yeah. double. Big, fake Tiny Murder Clown. Tiny Murder Clown's double. Double, not Tiny Murder Clown, the first one. Okay. Uh, and after Suki, fake Suki says, who, uh, what did she say? Who killed your sister? Where's our sister? Where's our sister? Where's our sister? Suki says, you killed her, and she fires the lightning bolt. Okay. So that's a reflex, reflex save. I don't know why I'm rolling. What are you rolling? Reflex yeah. save. Okay. Uh, Suki rolled a natural one. Oh! Yeah! Natural one. I mean, this is the shittiest we've rolled as a company since the inception of the number. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, all right, I'm going to roll like a new die I got the other night in L.A. Uh, this is going to be for uh, Tiny Murder Clown. That's a natty 18, so it's probably a critical success. Yeah, yeah. he's got high And, and also, it's literally a critical success because of my feats. <laughs> Ah, okay. So Sorry. <laughs> you, Murder Clown takes no damage, and yes. Suki takes 66 points of damage. In the moment that you strike her with this lightning bolt, you see your sister's reflection as the light goes out of her eyes and the reflection dies. Oh, nicely done, Sydney! Two down! Three to go! This needs to happen quickly. Uh, and then, as my second action, I will cast Guidance on... Aldo. Yeah, and then it's Aldo's turn. All right, Aldo is going to throw a uh, uh, a uh, a a uh, a. Um, <laughs> Aldo's fired himself. He's broken. He's broken. <laughs> oh, uh, that that is a that is a thirty-four to hit. To hit. Thirty-four while flat-footed is a critical hit. Oh! Yeah. Oh, 
Oh man, uh, that is 32 points of fire damage. Wow. Kaboom. Okay. All right. Uh, and then he has, uh, then, well, he still has the force. Okay. All right. And then he is going to throw a acid, acid thing at him. An acid, the old acid thing. Uh, 27 to hit. 27 to hit. Nice. All right. Woo. Finish uh, him off. Okay, that is five points of acid damage, and then he's going to take 2d6 persistent after No, that. he is not. No, he will not! Because he is dead! Yeah, baby! Awesome. All right, and then he's going to uh, throw a Hail Mary and throw a... Uh, Light bomb at the double of Tiny Murder Clown. Okay, if you miss, it'll be like Russell Wilson. It will. Oh, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> that hurt you and them. All right, that is a 19 to hit. 19 is a miss. Okay, so that's four points of splash damage. Four points of splash. Boom, Eris. Just, just on him. You're on fire. What do you got? It's so, figure tries to cut me, nicks me a little bit, <laughs> whatever, but I gape open and I see fake Eris like become sickened of me. Yep. And I look at her and I'm like, you're not me. Um, make a will save. Ooh. What did you say? Make a will what save. Will save and I'm frightened too, right? Or am I sickened too? You're sick. Sickened, sickened, definitely. All right, sickened, too. Let me just see. You're sickened, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Totally. Take a status penalty equal to the value on all my checks and descends. <laughs> I wrote natural two. That oh might my be it. God. Oh, well, hold on. That, oh, God, what's sickened? So what does that mean? Uh, what is your DC? 27. That is a critical fail. Yes! You fucking die! You die! The target is so afraid it might stop. Oh, you have to make Wait, what is she see? Oh. oh, what do you oh, see? Yeah, the yeah. Fear. The most horrifying she thing she could possibly what is imagine. What is greatest fear? My Those dice Those people tray. that we saw die in my like flashback are like, like being mean to you. <laughs> like, I don't know Whoa. what they're doing, but like... You are not gonna date that boy! Yeah, they're just like... <laughs> Alive, out of my room. and you're small, and they're yelling at you, put on long making pants. you feel bad. You're showing oh too much cleavage. We can see your entire neck mouth. You're, like, you're just like, I'm never gonna get out of this, am I? I'm too small to like live on my oh own, my and it's so helpless. And you just feel like a pit of despair. You're never gonna be able to get out. Wow. You're making yeah. me like sad to be a you know I mean? What's the word? Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's one way out. So okay. she sees she yeah. sees years and years of abuse at the hand of her uh, at the hands of her parents. It now must attempt a disillusion. She succumbs to that abuse and it kills her instantly. If you make a fortitude save, that got dark. I celebrate a little too early. I swear we'll to God. Deal with it. We'll unpack that after the show. <laughs> If it fails, it dies. If it succeeds, it takes 12d6 mental damage and, and probably it still runs die. away. All right, here comes the fortitude save. I kind of hope it fails because it's a cool moment, but I live and die by the dice. Here we go. That is going to be a 26. You Whoa. fail! You die! go a lifetime and never see Phantasmal Killer actually kill someone. I can't believe a 26 failed. Yeah. Uh, I think she would have failed from the mental damage anyways, but it's much more powerful to have her see all of that and then perish. There is one shadow left. Do you have any turns? I think you have an action left. I have one more action left, um, and I guess I'll pew a magic missile over to Tiny Murder Clan. Yeah, there you go. It's double. Just I'll pew a magic you missile. Your double, yeah. My double, yeah, yeah. Okay, just one? Uh, well, I got three three points, points, yeah, but I, I can only do one. Three points of so damage to Tiny Murder Clan. The last standing. 
Pelusion. Guys, it's the top of round four. There is one reflection left. Abdul Al Hazred, the mad poet, has disappeared into his cabin. What do you do, Tiny Murder? Club? I look at my double, and then I go, well, it figures it'd be the last. <laughs> and then I uh, flurry and blows it. Wait, can I rephrase that? I'm going to use flurry and blow. Wait, I'm just going to hand it a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one is a uh, <laughs> 35. That is a hit. Second one is a uh, 22. That is a Which miss. Is a miss, I know. God, yet damn to, it! Yet to hit with but, that. Uh, third, uh, natural 20. And oh! Yeah! So far, it's 30. Right, give me the first 30. damage, and then uh, let's do a fan crit for the final hit. It's yeah. also got to make a DC 27 fortitude save because I hit it with a flurry of blows, so it needs to be stunned, maybe? Calm down, dude. No, come on, come on. Let's do it, right? Do it, come on. Okay, uh, so, uh, hold on. Let's see here. Five. Got a good one. Uh, 13 plus uh, 19 points of damage. 19 for the first attack. All right, now, Joe, give me that fan crit. All right, this one from Chase. In Cedro Woolley, Washington? Oh, yeah. Is he here? Awesome. Yes, Chase. This one's called Bloodshot. Whether from your follow-through or pulling your weapon back. Your hands. Yeah. Your gruesome hit flings blood and gore <laughs> into the eyes of you and near onlookers. Wait, what? <laughs> Chase, what the fuck? Well, this, this is a fumble. God damn it. You can't even do that right. So, we love you, Chase. We love you, Chase. Pick up another one. it's broken. Just do double damage. <laughs> God damn it. It right. really did break. The site the broke. Reload the web page. Or I lost internet in the venue. One or the other. Wait, oh wait, wait, wait. Well, let's give it one more shot. It's over. Please give it one more shot. God's sake! I mean, it's not terrible. Have you tried turning it out and off again? <laughs> Try did blowing you, into the blow floppy drive. Cartridge. Just blow into the floppy drive! It's like a Nintendo <laughs> cartridge. Oh boy. Uh, what about Alexander from Seattle, Washington? Dude, there could be no, 10 right. Alexanders. <laughs> he had to work tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Orange Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Skill and determination have brought you to the moment where you find an opening in your opponent's defenses. Now it's up to chance to see how your true strike will land. Treat this attack as having the fatal D12 trait. If this weapon has the fatal D, already has the D12 trait, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so fatal D12 trait. So to double your the damage hand. and add a D12. Oh, no. 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 Your, your damage turn, dice change to D12. That's cool. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty good because I get four of them. Uh, D12. <laughs> this is all. Skid seemed impressed. It's a lot of fanfare. A lot of eyebrow raising. Who? Uh, 27 points. He had 14 hit points. <laughs> oh, yeah! Reflection falls. Oh, the most oh. delicious soul of all is your own. <laughs> As the last dream reflection falls to the ground and seeps its way back to the pool, wherever it perished, that water it just turns into water. It sort of leaks back into the pool. And 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 the memories are throughout this whole fight, I, I, I should have mentioned, like the memories are keep coming back, but you're so focused on the fight that you can't take this all in. If you missed, perhaps it's because you were distracted by these memories entering your mind and now that the fight is over and you have a moment to breathe you're just hit by them again it's just like deluge of memories and then all of a sudden all of you hear at the exact same time this bizarre series of clicks and high-pitched hoots intermixed with crackling mechanical static as all of a sudden all of your memories are replaced with an image of a faraway desert city and then the, the cacophony settles and you realize that all these hoots and crackling are actually a language from another world. And somehow, inexplicably, you all understand it. Again, you're flashed with these memories of Laos drowning you 
in the mad poet's dreamland's oasis, being led through the receiving doors of Briarstone Asylum in a catatonic state, waking in the asylum's basement, and all of these images and sounds coalesce into a sudden shout of wake up, just like you heard in episode one. Yes. And as this mental sensation begins to fade from your startled minds, all of you, even those who weren't in Briarstone Asylum, hear a strange voice that overlays the clicks and static that says, you are now free. But to remain so, you must find me. And that's the end of book three.